Hello everyone. Let us see how we can work with icons. If you look at reports by consulting firms, icons are everywhere. In the sample that has been shared with you, you can see that icons are used for everything from bullets to interspersing with text in forms of infographic. It's really important to use icons because it helps make the report much more readable, much more user friendly. But it is equally important to be very careful and conscious of the way you use the icons. So you don't want to overdo it. You want to make sure that the colors are correct. And of course, you should be creative and try different things, but then it should not be too overwhelming for the user. Just to give you an example. I really like this one. It's a BCG report. The icons are big, they are bold. The colors are not intrusive. It's a very soft color. And also the icons are a little cartoonish, but they are also professional at the same time. So it doesn't look like a dry, boring report. It looks attractive, but at the same time, it's very easy to read. Again, it's mostly a matter of taste. And also it depends not just on what you like, but what the end user likes, right? So please make sure to keep all these factors in mind. Now, where do we get icons from? One option is to get the icons directly from Microsoft. If you have Microsoft 365, then I can go to insert and then I have an option called icons. In the last video, we have already seen that we have the option to get images. But we can also get icons, which are, there are quite a few of them. Even though I don't think the variety is there in terms of the style, I think the style is more or less the same. In addition to the icons, you also have these cutout people like this. In this, you can search for a pose and a specific person from a race or an ethnicity. For example, if I search for Indian, Right? It shows me Indian people. And if I say sitting, then it shows me poses related to sitting. Let's say I want walking. It doesn't work, but then you get the point. You can search for different terms. For example, if I say upset, I do get quite a few options here. Then we have stickers, which are, as the name suggests, they are stickers. Um, Again, I'm not very sure if in a professional presentation you would want to use stickers because they are quite cartoonish, but then good to know that the option has been given. You also have videos, which I will cover in detail in another video where I cover how to work with images, how to work with videos and audio effectively. We have illustrations, which are sort of like icons, but then they're not just an icon, a single one but it's a collection of icons put together. And then finally, you have cartoon people, which is, as you would expect, cartoon people. I do like this. Like before we had this option in PowerPoint, you would have had, let's say, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator to be able to do these things for you. But now using cartoon people, let's say I can take a person and have two expressions and look at this. Just making this a little larger, making a copy. So one of them is this one. And then I'll take the same 383 and 419 height and width. So we take 383 and then this should be good enough. Here we go. So we can have the same person, but with two different expressions like this. Let me put a screenshot here as well, so that you remember that all of these various options are available. Okay, now let's talk about the icons in more detail. So when I take an icon, let us say we are searching for 
something related to analytics and I'm choosing maybe this one. Now with the icon, remember these are essentially different shapes that have been grouped together. So if I right click and I ungroup it, it will give you a confirmation, but if you click on yes, it will convert it into individual shapes. As you can see, now this cog and this circle is actually separated. But here's the thing, you would have expected this to be separated even further, but that won't happen. So it's good to know that you have some level of customizability. For example, maybe I can make the left side of the brain as a different color. So it's good to know that I can do that, but maybe I want even more flexibility. For this, we will go to a website, which is Icon Finder. Of course, with a paid account, I will now be able to do even more, but then even with the free one, there's quite a bit that you should be able to do. Let's see. So using Icon Finder, I'm going to search for any keyword that we want. Let's search for analytics. Now I also have a free account right now. In fact, I haven't even signed in. So on the left side, we will select free because we don't want the paid ones. And you see, you have quite a few options available. There are also different styles available as you can see here. Let's pick one of these. So I'm choosing maybe this one. Now what I'm going to do is I will not download it as a PNG. I will download it as an SVG, a scalable vector graphic. What does that do? Let's have a look. So when I download it, come back, insert pictures, this device, and from my downloads folder, I'm selecting my SVG. This looks like any other icon, but there are a couple of things different about it. Number one, because it is an SVG, no matter how much you zoom in, it will never ever become blurred which is fantastic. The other advantage is that you can ungroup it. But unlike before, with the icon that we got from Microsoft, the ungroup did not really give me the level of flexibility that I wanted. Here, when I select an ungroup, we'll have to do this a few times. So I ungroup a few times. You will notice that every single part has become separated. How cool is that? Which means you have utmost flexibility. So maybe I want to select this, change the color. I want to select my arrow and then change the color here as well. Maybe I want not five lines, but I just want three lines. And I would like to make this a little shorter. So I can just move it like this. Let's move the three lines below. And then maybe the arrow that we have, we would like to add one more of these. So we want to add one more of this. Even though it's two objects, we'll consider this as one object only. So I'm going to shift the two lines above. And then we select the arrow and then make one more below it like this. And the best part is that because it's completely customizable, if I don't like the height or the color, I can move every single part in this, as you can see. How cool is that? Look at this, there we go. So possibilities are limitless because you can essentially take an icon and then make it your own. In fact, you can take different icons and then pull out different parts from different icons and make your own icon from scratch. One more website that I would like to share with you, something I use personally all the time, is Undraw. So 
So on Andro, I am sharing the link here as well. All right, as you can see on Andro, we have all these beautiful illustrations available. And I can select any one of these, maybe this one. We will download it not as a PNG, but as a scalable vector graphic. And now let's see. One more time, insert pictures, and then hop over to downloads, and then Put it here. Once we ungroup it a few times, you will notice that every part of this has become independent. So whatever changes you want to make here, you can do that. For example, maybe I want to move this search option here. Maybe I don't want to keep this line so I can remove it. Maybe I want to change the color of the shirt to a different color like this. And then maybe I want this entire set of icons to come a little to the right like this. How nice is that? So you get complete flexibility over this. As far as icons are concerned, I again would suggest that you read reports. That's a great way to see how the icons should be used. Where to get icons from, I've already shared a couple of websites with you, told you how you can make modifications to it by getting a scalable vector graphic. But then the most important thing is to get ideas. And for that, one more time, if I go to KPMG and I type CPG and then PDF, and I will open a few of these, Do you see how they are using icons here? This is a KPMG report, everyone. Look at how next to each point that they are mentioning, they have nicely used this small icon and that looks really nice. If we scroll a little bit further, look at this. They have a diagram here. Again, they have kept these icons like this. So the more you study different reports, for example, even the one that we have here, I really like this. It's very simple. They are presenting three different points, but the fact that they have done this um, with an image, which is in the format of an icon, is fantastic. Um, it just looks so nice and it blends so well with the rest of the report. Now, remember, this is art. It's not science. So it's very hard for anybody to tell you what to do, what not to do. On paper, it might not seem like a good idea, when somebody says that, hey, I think we should put an icon of a brain in the center and put three points around it, it may not seem like a good idea, but then once you do it, you might really like it. But remember, you're not creating slides for yourself. You're creating slides for the client or for different stakeholders. So always keep that in mind. Don't end up using what you like, but always end up creating what you know that the audience is going to like. That's the most important thing.